As darkness seeps into the woodland realm, the elves of this once fabled land have gone ahead and been corrupted, joining the very force they swore to destroy, Dogal Door. Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome back to a glorious 3 vs 3 online battle on Rise of Mordor. We have elves, we have the glorious forces from the east as well as the men of the west it's going to be a very exciting battle for sure and before we get started i want to go ahead and give a massive shout out to pope john paul he is also a youtuber covering a whole range of attila mods and other total war games i definitely recommend checking him out he invited me to come and play with a bunch of the guys on his discord so i really appreciate it it was a ton of fun we got this battle done and we also got an awesome siege of umber so if you guys are looking forward to that make sure you go ahead and hit that like button down below and subscribe if you haven't already so you can go ahead and see that scenario battle because my god do my uruk archers put some work in on the siege of umber i'll just say that now but in today's battle we do have two forces from the woodland realm as well as an allied dogal door uh pike line it's basically just a bunch of dogal door pikes it's kind of hilarious uh, it actually does play out pretty well in this battle so yeah we've got two woodland realm players and then over on this other side we also have some dogal door skirmishes getting run down by the lancers right there they're absolutely brutal. Already up to 200 kills on these lancers. It's actually insane. Uh, just clearing out these skirmishes. But poor, poor Merkwood skirmishes. Uh, but yeah, we've got the forces form from the Easterlings. Again, they look absolutely glorious as always. Uh, we'll take a look at from this angle. So Attila Lighting doesn't mess us up. Again, some of the best looking units in the entire mod right here. Uh, I think they look absolutely spectacular. Then over on the center, we do have the uh, forces from the Linden Elves. So kind of, you know, good elves versus evil elves. Not that, the, uh, not that the Wood Elves are evil per se, they're just kind of a lot more elvish than, say, the Linden Elves in their grumpiness, that is for sure. And then we have a force from the, uh, the, you know, the Swan Knights back here as well. You have the Knights of Elagris and, and the other glorious, glorious infantry against beautiful, beautiful models indeed. So it's going to be a very interesting battle. Again, as you can see, the map itself is actually really well designed. I like that there's kind of small hills arcing around the map. There's like a, a village in between that you can actually fight in, which is very cool. And there's just kind of these smaller landmarks, which kind of add a nice amount of... Uh, not, not nice amount of you know, terrain and kind of playability in these larger battles and the map itself is actually very big as well which is great for large scale engagements because too often in Attila you find yourself having to redline because you've got these massive armies so yeah large map like this absolutely awesome and again I really really like like all the flowers kind of just scattered around it uh, actually does add quite a lot to the battle I think because it makes it so that uh, you don't see the gross Attila uh, textures on the, on the full ground but the kind of the flowers do make things a lot nicer so I am playing as the Woodland Realm. I'm going to be on this right-hand side, and we're going to be trying to repel them. One of the real downsides of the Woodland Realm is they don't get access to any cavalry besides one command unit. So, and because we've got two of them players on our side, basically what that means is we have two cavalry units and Dogal Door who don't have any cavalry, I believe. And maybe, maybe they do. I'm pretty sure they don't. So because of that, we are playing basically cavalry and our opponents have brought a wealth of cavalry. You can already see two units appearing there. You've got a bunch of cavalry back here. And on the left-hand side, again, a ton of horse as well. So, yeah, we're going to be in a pretty tricky situation for sure. Battle is going to kick off by uh, some of the lances coming a little bit too close to my archer line. Obviously, the Elven archers having an absolutely insane range. 225 on the longbows. Able just to volley off here and uh, hit these lances pretty effectively. Look at that going down. That's obviously going to immediately move these lances off. And right now, my the archers are just trying to push off. So right now, this is going to, where the battle is going to completely kick off. The cavalry itself is going to start to move in against my archers. I kind of decided to start playing a bit of chicken because you know, obviously this is a really good strategy of just bum rushing the enemy archers because what it does is it basically forces the enemy uh, to, to run their archers away, meaning we're not shooting, and that gives your infantry time to push forward and kind of be really aggressive. However, I knew that my opponent uh, probably wasn't going to be fully charging me because of the pikes and other stuff like that. However, I do get uh, charged right here. I didn't have time to form shield wall. And the lances are going to be able to get a very, very nice charge off into my infantry line. And this is kind of basically going to be a battle on my side of things. Again, more cavalry coming in. I was actually very, pretty surprised he did decide to commit to this charge. I mean, it did work out for him. But obviously, I could have moved these archers back at any time. What I probably should have done a little bit more effectively is get a very nice charge off on my expensive archers. 
Rangers. Uh, what you know, what I probably should have done is I should have like staggered my retreat, moved two units back a little bit earlier, and then had one on the front line. So if he continues to charge, these would also be shooting him. And this, yeah, as I said, this is going to basically be the battle uh, on my side of things, is dealing with this horde of cavalry. We only have one unit of cavalry. I managed to get a very nice charge off onto the uh, onto the lancers on this side with my Elkin riders, who are obviously absolutely spectacular. This guy is, uh, yeah, getting stuck in right there. So yeah, you know this is a you know this is a kind of a, a messy battle for sure, and again I haven't really played a ton of Rise of Mordor recently, so you know bracing and do doing kind of the other really good stuff is going to be a little bit harder. Again, he gets a very very nice charge off here onto my uh, onto my shock infantry. Unfortunately, not able to form square in time because I was engaged on a different unit. And yeah, as I said, it's going to be extremely messy. Kind of just trying to keep my archers alive, just trying to volley off and, and pick away his cavalry as best as I can. Commit units to this cavalry to try and deal as much as possible. My opponent's going to get a very nice charge in here. But you can see I am taking down a handful of these horses bit by bit. My archer volleys are coming in and actually being quite effective. However, the consistent hammer and anvil is just going to be brutal uh, and very, very scary indeed. Over on the far left-hand side, our other elven player is, again, kind of, kind of doing exactly the same as me, but he's not up against necessarily as much cavalry quite yet. Obviously, uh, all this cavalry is going to come in and he's going to be kind of overrun by five units of horse. But yeah, as you can see, I managed to route one unit so far and there is still another five or six horses still left for Remaining. They also have all of this cavalry back here as well. I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty, it's quite a lot. I'm not going to lie. And another beautiful charge comes flying in there by the Lancers. Just able to absolutely rip through my thinner lines. Again, my bad there. I was kind of, you know, obviously microing absolutely to my heart. You know, just anything I could micro, I was doing so. And just trying to get my archers just to focus fire down these cavalry units. Because again, these cavalry units are expensive and... If my archers keep on firing, they will inevitably bring them down and uh, yeah, do a lot of damage. And I am able to kind of get some spears onto this cavalry and help to really try and pick it down bit by a bit. And I do start to kind of bring back my battle line. Unfortunately, but I lost about four units of my infantry here just to kind of these consistent charges coming in. And again, like, I feel like I traded, like, I definitely did not trade perfectly, but I still think I, I was able to take down a lot of this cavalry, which definitely was pretty effective. Again, another charge coming in. And you could suggest that I, like, I probably should have retreated back to this battle line right here, but I kind of almost wanted to have this really scrappy battle because I feel like I could have killed a lot of this cavalry. And obviously we would have invested a lot more money into our infantry line. So I was kind of happy with like having this super scrappy battle because as you, as you can see, like my archers are doing pretty well. I've lost maybe one uh, proper unit, like this unit right here has probably taken the most casualties out of all of this. But yeah, as you can see, like I've killed a fair amount of horses. That's another unit of horse running there, another unit horse running there this unit is basically dealt with this unit is going to be taking missile fire as i retreat i've uh, got more spears moving in here as well to help out my cavalry fight so i keep on getting the wrong angle uh of the lighting for attila attila only ever looks good from this angle right here and then from here it's like i don't know what's going on everything's so dark good old attila lighting Man, I wish one day they could change that. <laughs> like, seriously, it's disgusting. If anyone knows of a mod that does that, please do let me know right now. Yeah, as you can see, all these units are so depleted. My battle line is far too thin. My, our opponents though, are doing a pretty smart idea. They're not looking to engage these pikes, obviously. They're going to just hold this line uh, and probably look for like a, a gap to open. Because, you know, if they charge this battle line, they're going to get slaughtered by pikes. So I'm just going to kind of hold off and keep my pikes in place and kind of continue to let their cavalry do their thing. I do have some shock infantry on the far flanks as well. So again, these guys are going to be able to really get stuck in. They're going to be taking some missile fire, which is nice. And I do move around some of my weaker infantry on the left-hand side because basically what I want to try my best to do is basically focus down like six units of my archers on one of these units and turn them around right here. So get some of my elven infantry stuck in against them and then just shoot the ever living crap out of the back of this unit and you should be see i believe i popped barrage which allows me to shoot faster on my units and you should just see a rain of a hail of arrows coming in just trying to take down as many 
of these warriors as possible. And basically, I can do this for as long as my infantry lasts. And look at that. The shock infantry is getting melted. Already losing over 30 men in the unit. That is absolutely uh, brutal. Uh, however, more cavalry is appearing. There's two units of horses back there. More cavalry coming around the flank. The cavalry from back here have now been uh, sent over to this right-hand side. And again, they're going to be coming in here. We do have some horses charging in. Luckily, these guys are a bit depleted. They're going to be getting absolutely hammered by the archer fire. However, the cavalry is going to be able to get in once again. Luckily, again, this is slightly depleted. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to spread out my archers as much as possible. So when cavalry does inevitably come in, which it will inevitably do, I can just basically kind of create this kind of firing range where my archers just can shoot in. Like their cavalry can only hit one of my units and then the other four or five archers all hit in on my opponent. I also managed to actually break another unit of cavalry right there. However, there is more coming in. This unit of horses is going to be charging in there against one of my archers. Who may be a little bit too far forward. Again, I was kind of like tempted. To, like I, I did notice this and see that my unit was uh, like further forward. But I kind of wanted to bait them in. To see if I could trap them with these spears and my own cavalry. I do manage to kind of catch them to a extent. And then obviously I'm volleying as they pull back. So they have lost a handful of horses. But... Nowhere near worth it, um, unless I can maybe rack up a few more here. More cavalry do arrive as well. Knights of the Silver Swan moving in, able to pin down my own cavalry. But I am going to be pulling that back through the friendly lines of Dolgodor. And again, these ranks are a lot thicker, so they're able to uh, do a much nicer job here of beating them back. And uh, yeah, the archers are going to continue to fire. However, more cavalry is now arriving, moving around, more infantry going in. And the fight on the far left-hand side has fully erupted now. We have the amazing Linden Shipwright Nobles going in against the Woodland Realm uh, Bladesman. And once again, you can see the fight is being pretty kind of, you know, neck and neck right now. Neither side really racking up. The glorious elven armor is just spectacular on both sides. It really does. And yeah, the entire front line is, is definitely up against it. You've got some of the Noldoran swords here as well. The two-handed weapon uh, are, you know, very, very deadly going up against the shock on the other side. Able to really commit a lot of infantry to that fight and really put pressure on. And again, it's just kind of opening up sides for this cavalry to can come around. And uh, yeah, definitely take advantage of killing these uh, spearmen who you maybe necessarily can't deal with this because they're having to uh, you know, reform constantly. So yeah, pretty brutal fight. Luckily as well, that's a very nice engagement on our side of things right here. Able to get a fresh unit of cavalry in there, stuck in against some of these Eskrians. Uh, right then, you can also see the, uh, the Elven Commander there as well, screaming. That Elf has an arrow through his shoulder. Brutal stuff right there. But more cavalry is underway. And the Elven Archers on that left-hand side are doing a pretty good job on my side. Look how it's like, oh, nice, nice and neat on this side. Battle lines are formed on the far right-hand side absolute bloody mess and there's not really any room whatsoever uh left more cavalry has now made its way around looking to obviously hit my archer blob i do get my own cavalry round as well i want to try and try and rear charge this try and break this unit of uh, of shock infantry would not be a bad idea and also commit the enemy general into the battle because if he gets committed i'm gonna start shooting him uh, and maybe try and get a lucky arrow off there to break the uh the enemy general we are abandoned we shouldn't be uh, I don't really know why it said that, because the battle is definitely... Ne neither of our allies are definitely broken. However, a mass cavalry charge over on this side. Going to obviously be looking to get into the gaps and either go after that cavalry or move around here and obviously hit these archers, which I think yeah, there's plenty of opportunity for them to actually hit these archer lines. Uh, very, 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 very effective stuff. Indeed, and you can see the cavalry ranging up. There are some spearmen who can obviously make their way in as well and help out. And obviously, all the archer fire is going right in there onto these noblemen. However, the nobles are going to continue to go. I'm surprised they haven't maybe gone for the battle line as well. Obviously, running through to the cavalry is not a bad idea. There's more cavalry there as well. Oh, and this is going to be an elven sandwich. As more and more lions come flying in, that is brutal. Unfortunately, that unit of... Uh, that's actually the general as well. Oh, that's really unfortunate. Um, but again, there's not really much you can do as a lot of the elven front line is starting to break. There is going to be a little skirmish in the forest as well. Or sorry, in the village. Against the champions of Dolgodor, which again, just look absolutely amazing. Such a, a sick looking unit. Really deadly blades and I love the skulls on the back. And they're going to be getting engaged upon by some of the Eastling infantry. Obviously, this is really the only piece of the Dolgador formation that they can honestly attack. 
because, you know, the entire rest of the battlefield is all just simply bikes. So, uh, yeah, pretty bad indeed. Again, more cavalry coming in. I am able to really pin down this unit of Swan Knights and just focus it down with arrow fire. So, again, that's another unit of cavalry ticked off my list. But my, my archers are running low now. Uh, the cavalry harassment has done a great job. It's also absorbed a lot of my ammunition as well. So, you know, even though my archers, uh, you know, have been getting kills, it's not necessarily on... Uh, the targets we would always want them to happen. Another unit of cavalry coming in as well, looking to hit my general. The archer fire bow, yeah, I kind of spread out my archers pretty effectively, I would say, to then deal with this and just solely focus them down. Over in the main kind of crux of the engagement, we do have some Dogledore uh, blades going up against a large amount of the Easterlings and also some of the dismounted infantry as well. And Armorov have some uh, great frontline infantry. They basically are just, you know, dismounted knights. So, uh, still very effective. And more cavalry is now coming to my flank. Give me a moment, for pity's sake. Another two units there. The enemy general right there. It's just brutal. It really is an overload of cavalry. And maybe we could have, like, you know, split up our pikes a little bit to maybe give me a little bit more protection. Um, but then again, that would just leave more opportunity to kind of come through the center. And kind of the pikes are doing what the pikes are supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be denying land. You're no good commander, as they kept on saying in the battle, would charge pikes head on. And, uh, you know, that's exactly, you know, what they're doing. They're just kind of ignoring them, which is giving us opportunities to kind of play elsewhere. But... Um, you know, they are still being pretty deadly. And luckily on our left-hand flank, you know, we're actually doing a very good job at cleaning up our opponents. Uh, the Lillian Elves are actually getting beaten back. Even with all this overwhelming cavalry, I guess just the sheer amount of infantry that we do have is, is really coming in and, and being very useful in this battle. Able to actually start beating back and creating some nice battle lines. You can see on this other flank as well, we've done a pretty good job of engaging some of the cavalry, getting archers around the side. However, this unit of archers is about to get side charge right there. Which is pretty deadly indeed. But for the most part, they've kind of like evened out very nicely on this flank and able to get some shock infantry into these uh, into these noblemen and then able to start moving around. There are a couple units of the woodland, uh, the warlord, sorry, moving in again. Beautiful unit. Sexy as hell. They really, really do look amazing. Over on my side, though, it's me once again asking for your support to watch me get absolutely run down by cavalry. I've got a unit of spearmen who are a little bit safe. I also do manage to get a unit of infantry charged into the back of these uh, macemen as well, uh, which is kind of nice. We also managed to kill an enemy general as well. What, on what flank? Over on this side? Yeah, nice to kill the Linden general, which is good. But again, this cavalry is going to come flying in. I try and block as best as I can for this uh, with some of my archers who necessarily don't have any ammunition left, but... Again, you know, it's, it's, it's shooting season and the cavalry can just move in and uh, really get the damage done. Again, just able to pull through their cavalry and then just charge another unit. I am trying to protect myself as much as possible. And I am whittling down some of these Knights of the Silver Swan down to 50 men right now. But obviously, they've managed to rack up 60, 70 kills. So, probably worth it on their part. And they're just going to pull out of that engagement. Uh, luckily, though, next time they do come in, they're going to be a bit more vulnerable. Because they're not going to kind of have that HP shield that units do have in this game. So... My arrows will be finding their mark. There is also a very, very cool unit of Dunedain Rangers up here as well. Able to shoot from the darkness. And they can really look great as well. The Dunedain Archers can shoot. I think they have Stalk, which if you play Warhammer, you know they basically shoot. Uh, as if, and you still can't see them, so it's just arrows coming in. I mean, obviously, it's pretty easy to counterplay. You'll be able to see the arrow trails. But still looking cool nonetheless. And they do look great as well. As they continue to volley in. Just trying to take out some of my elven units. They do have pretty high armor piercing as well. So they'll be able to get through uh, fairly effectively. Oh, do I actually, did I actually manage to break that? No, you know, I didn't manage to break that unit of Knights of Silver Swan. I actually moved over. But luckily, I hopefully I did enough damage to it to give the elves on the other side uh, a little bit of protection. And a little bit of survivability. Uh, so in the, for, in the actual village itself, which again does look very cool. We've actually managed to... to do a fairly good job and there are also more pikemen from Dolgodor kind of closing off the retreats right here uh, of this position so able to kind of basically silence this unit of Loke Rim 
uh, infantry. However, the right-hand side is kind of a bit scary. I am constantly popping off in Courage, though. Uh, I have two units of these Lords of Lazgallon. Las Lazgallon, I think is how you pronounce it. They both have Encourage, so I'm just basically just trying to keep this uh, section of a battlefield pumped up with morale so that the, the blades don't run. Because if this right flank crumbles, the battle is more than certainly completely over. So we're trying to avoid that as best as, as, best as possible. And more cavalry is coming in again, just volleying the ever-living crap out of it, trying to, like, you know, if you want to charge me, which you're obviously going to do, I just want to just try and kill as many as possible. There's also another unit of cavalry coming around here, so I think I've dealt with, like, 10, 15 horses this battle, which is absolutely insane. Uh, very difficult to deal with indeed, but, you know, this battle wasn't exactly uh, a super... I mean, it was a very competitive battle, but, you know, we're, we're just all having fun here. It, it's, you know, like, no one cares about cavalry spam or anything like that because it's, uh, you know, we, we did choose these factions uh, knowing that we would have no cavalry advantage whatsoever. And, yeah, I am basically out of ammunition at this point. I did manage to kill the enemy general, but Bane of the Step does go down after charging in against a lot of this infantry. And then this unit right here, I don't really have any ammunition left to do this. So the Knights of Inlambrus are like, going to be able to really just charge in against me. And uh, yeah, there's not really much I can do about it. You can see the fallen horses from previous charges scattered throughout. They're going to be able to get stuck in. And yeah, charge my general. Again, I try and keep my general a little bit safer, but he is going to be going straight through that. I try and cover this brute. So I put a unit of weaker archers on the front line to really try and absorb the charge. Which did do a pretty good job. However, this other unit, you know, this other squadron does then run right through my cavalry. And obviously, you never want to get yourself charged by by the uh, by the cavalry whatsoever, unfortunately. Uh, on the left-hand side, though, we have basically won this, won this engagement on the left-hand side, which is... Super nice. I guess we didn't have as much cavalry for, as, uh, to deal with as I did. I basically have only fought cavalry this entire battle on that right-hand side. Uh, that's going to go. This unit is going to... You know, this army is going to be able to reinforce us. We have some spare units right here. However, that cavalry charge by the Knights of Inlandris, over 100 kills right now. Absolutely brutal. Obviously, going to go immediately into the rear ranks right there of Dolgaldor. Able to then just probably pull through through the gaps they've kind of created. Going to fall back again going into my archers. And basically just play ping pong with my units. And again, I have no archers really at this point either to deal with them whatsoever. So it's going to be absolutely brutal. Able just to pull out and then move into another unit. Really nice play here on the Swan Knights. Uh, just able to really kind of use that. I and mean, obviously because they've knocked everyone down, they can pull out uh, without basically any casualties whatsoever. Uh, and that unit of Swan Knights is basically on touch and has over 400 kills. So absolutely amazing but again that's kind of like the strength of having cavalry this late on in the battle you know when people don't really have anything to deal with it uh you can really just rack up so many kills is this cavalry gonna charge frontally on the pikes and i was gonna say getting over 40, 400 kills and then charging on the pikes pretty much the smartest idea but they are gonna be moving in right here getting a nice charge here on the uh the rest of the infantry they're obviously going to be getting pikes down on them. So i'm gonna be taking a few more casualties and i think i'm firing any bit of extra arrow edge i do have to help out. I mean, we did manage to kill like five or six of the, of the general unit, but again, that general unit is over 450 kills now. Absolutely insane. Definitely the uh, highest kill scoring unit in the game for sure. So, I mean, the battle itself doesn't look awful for us as the, as the, uh, as the blue and yellow side. You know, we are struggling a bit and I am basically dead at this point but you know on the left hand side we've, we've won on this on this side we've got a decent set of units in the in the city itself moving in a lot of this kind of shock infantry the enemy don't really have any cavalry left besides that one unit of knights and uh, if we can reinforce this section um you know kind of quickly which I believe we are now doing now uh, if we can reinforce this section then I think we actually do stand a chance of winning this you know unfortunately I think a lot of these spears uh, don't make it in time and if we would have shifted over our battle line that little bit sooner. We probably could have stemmed this from actually breaking and just reinforced it, which I think would have been actually been really effective. Uh, you know, just because again, the pikes weren't really doing anything. So, and at that point, I'd killed most of the cavalry. It could have been a great idea just to move this, uh, move these guys in, just in another line. And uh, the pikes actually do a pretty effective job at beating back our opponents. Uh, on the left hand side as well, we are you know, continuing to wrap up the battle. However, there's not really much left. There's one unit of, uh, of pikes there, and the rest of the infantry is basically non-existent for the elves like we have one but at a heavy heavy cost indeed 
Uh, the pikes are falling back as well, trying to you know, trying to defend themselves as much as possible. There are a handful of units still scattered around the battlefield. I've got like a unit of spears left, and that's really about it. The uh, pikes kind of fall, falling back a little bit, obviously being very cautious of the knights of Inlandra, so I could charge them at any time, basically. Um, and then we've got a lot more infantry moving in. There's even some Dunedain archers right there. Just racking up a few more kills on the pikemen from the side, up to 150 kills on the Dunedain pikes. It's not bad, and they're able to continue on the Dunedain archers, sorry. Uh, they're able to, to really start, you know, volley in here and get some high casualties. As you can see, uh, as you can see, these, uh, these poppies were not uh, red to begin with. They were white, and you know, the blood of a battle has really caused some issues. The cavalry's going to come over to his left-hand side, and there's not really much we can do about that. We have no cavalry of our own to counter it. And the units are so depleted at this point that this unit of Knights of the Silver Sun are going to be able to... Oh, Knights of Inladris, sorry. Are going to be able to get stuck in here. There's no real way we can brace against this, so... Yeah, another, another 100 or so kills there on the Knights. Able to really move in here. Uh, going after the cavalry. And yeah, the, the Lord Archer unit is probably going to be struggling as well. The uh, right-hand side is now broken completely. There's going to be a unit trying to chase down the Dunedain Archers. But again, not going to be able to really catch them. Dunedain are fast and able to get the hell out of there. There's also a unit of uh, Heaven Guard right here. A beautiful looking unit. From uh, Diamroth. Able to get in there and just kind of take out a handful of catch. Oh, they do actually manage to catch them, which is kind of nice. And yeah, you, as you can see, the Knights of the Silver Swan able to really get stuck in there. We do manage to get some more spears to this fight, but again, not going to be enough to really deal with that cavalry unit. The rest of the Struck Infantry is just getting eaten alive right now. And the battle is looking very, very grim indeed. As these guys now get enveloped, more infantry moving around. Obviously, I mean, they're like, like what the, uh, the, the red players are doing. It's kind of, kind of creating a wall so the pikes can't reinforce this and uh, silence the enemy general. Obviously, we have a cavalry moving around as well. And again, it wouldn't be a bad idea to engage him with his infantry and just use that cavalry. However, the cavalry is busy over on this other side as well, able to really get stuck in. And again, look at the casualty line right there. The bodies just piling up as we go from the battlefield. The brutal fight in the village that we necessarily didn't take a look at. And then the uh, the huge uh, slog fest right there was, uh, yeah, pretty insane indeed. So, uh, yeah, anyway, that's, that's basically going to be the battle at this point. There is like a, a lot. The last 10 minutes is basically us forming a new box with the rest of our pikes and just like laughing about it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to get some good charges still left. I mean, unfortunately, then pikes do not go down. They do manage to take kill quite a few of this cavalry unit, though, as they pull out. And yeah, look at that. Over 550 kills on that Knights of the Silver Swan. So what I'll do is I'll skip ahead now uh, to the kind of final stand uh, of this battle. And then we'll check that out. And then we'll check out the, uh, the kills at the end. Okay, so as you can see, this was our final stand right here, trying to repel back the enemy. It actually almost worked. The enemy didn't have that many men left, but unfortunately our morale is just crumbling at this point. Army losses are really starting to take account, and yeah, the battle is going to be lost. But honestly, I think we did a very good job in this battle, considering how much cavalry the enemy had and how little we had. I'm very happy with our performance. Like, again, a lot of my archer kills were all on horses. So, they're actually a lot more impressive than it maybe it looks. And, uh, yeah, obviously, we're going to have the, the absolute disgusting 630 kills there from Diane Roth. Absolutely crazy stuff indeed. So, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this uh, battle. If you did, make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. Obviously, go check out Pope as well. I'll leave a link to his, his, to his channel down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one.